صلى الله عليه وسلم زاد لا ينتهينا أقوام عن رفع أبصارهم إلى السماء عند الدعاء أو لا تختفن أبصارهم رواه مسلم. Let some people refrain from raising their sight towards the sama, towards the sky when they make a dua, or Allah Azza wa Jal will take away their sight. Don't be standing going like this. Okay? That's not from the sunnah. Some of the ulama say you look at, at your hands. At the place, you're just like a beggar. You're begging Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, you don't, you don't look up. But it's okay to look at, up at other times. In fact, it comes in one of the narrations. The Prophet ﷺ used to look abundantly to the sama. And even in the Quran, when the qibla was changed, you know, he used to look in the sky, alayhi salatu wassalam. But that's another discussion. In dua, no. In the dua, no. Here's the part. In one narration from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, the Prophet ﷺ was with the Sahaba. And some of them started raising their voices in the dhikr and the dua. Verily, the one you are calling on is neither deaf nor is he absent. So he commanded them to lower their voice. And this refers to what I was saying in the beginning of the lecture. This action of the Imams is unacceptable and it is unacceptable for us to raise our voice in the Ameen accordingly. Because Allah Azza wa had said, Ud'u Rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya. Call on to your Lord in humbleness, in the state of humbleness and within, in secret. إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ Nida'an khafiyya, Zakariya. He called unto Allah in a silent secret. The sunnah, which is not being applied today, is in the witr, in the salah. Allahumma ghfir lana, warhamna, wa'afina, wa'afu anna. And from the ad'iya of the Prophet ﷺ in this low, respectful, humble manner, and we say behind him, Ameen, Ameen. Not, Rabbana, Dhalamna, Fusana, Ameen, Ameen, Allah, Allah, Masjid, Swish. Everybody's about to, you know, it's about to be a riot in the house of Allah. Raising our voices, this is against the Quran and the Sunnah. Lower your voice. I'm giving a lecture, don't be telling me, brother, why are you raising your voice? I'm not making dua right now. I'm trying to remind us of the Sunnah. We need to stick to the Sunnah. If the Imam is raising his voice, you need to keep your cool, Akhi. Just say, Ameen, Ameen. And when he's saying, Subhanak, you don't say, Ameen. And when he's praising Allah, you don't say Ameen. We need to know when to say Ameen and when not when to keep silent. The Sunnah actually, even though, though some of the ulama said otherwise, is that when he's praising Allah, you don't say anything. He, you don't say anything. Once he, once he makes dua, you say Ameen. With humbleness, just like a slave standing before the master. Like this. Not by, you know, screaming and Ameen and Ameen. All this, all this acting is not part of the Sunnah. It's not part of Islam. And if we start feeling this feeling, trust me, we can show you Hindus and we can show you Christians feeling khushu' similar to that in their dua. And, and their dua is, Allah says, is fi dalal. Their dua is, is nothing. It's waste. But the kuffar do khushu' Don't think that if we cried, we, we made it there. No. Anyone can cry. You can listen to a song and cry for three days. Right or wrong? Does it mean it's from Allah? No. And the dua, you can be, you can get into some satanic, you know, situation, thinking that you're, you know, you're, you're okay with Allah while you're screaming at Allah Azza wa Jalla, and we're not. We need to slow down. Slow down. If you're an imam, you know what to do. Beg Allah Azza wa Jalla and insist in the dua. Insist. Don't say, oh Allah, forgive me if you will. The Prophet Muhammad said, don't do that. When you want to make dua, be firm. Oh Allah, forgive me, forgive me. And the sunnah is to repeat the dua three times. Three times. Stick to the sunnah. And don't turn it into a rhyming session. Like the imams do today. It's a rhyming session. You know, like in rap, in poetry, you know, you rhyme. They want to make the dua rhyming, even if they wind up saying nonsense. They wind up saying things that are unacceptable in the process of trying to make the sajjah. The rhyming. We don't need that. Let each word end differently. Allahumma khfirli wa rahamni. Allahumma rda'an al-Muslimin. Doesn't have to be uh, everything mean, 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 moon, moon, moon. Everything has to be in the same, you know, for the dua to be good. No. If it comes naturally, alhamdulillah. But to try to exert ourselves in this fashion, not necessarily. Keep the dua straight to the point. Keep, keep it according to the sunnah. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to repeat the dua three times. One of the Salaf said, I've asked Allah for my need for 20 years and He did not respond to me. I asked Allah to give me success that I mind my business. Now, what, what, what is the lesson from this? Don't give up. Don't say, I asked Allah, He didn't give me. 
Allah knows when to give us what we need. Allah may delay something we ask for because of goodness that Allah knows. Because some of us, as soon as we get what we want, we forget about Allah. And as long as we need it, we continue to beg Allah. So Allah will keep us in the state of begging as means of goodness for us. So he waited for 20 years asking Allah, you know, help me mind my business. Subhanallah. And he still hasn't got it. Because perhaps if he gets that, he will feel conceited. Or he will feel he prays himself and he will be lost. Allah Azza wa Jal is keeping him in this condition. So with that said, I uh, conclude, brothers and sisters in Islam,